Never grow a wishbone, my love, where your backbone ought to be. Clementine Paddleford. Oh, snap. What's tea, girls? You've just tuned in to Broken Women Win podcast. Discovering purpose in Christ beyond our ramshackle past. I am none other than your hope dealer, Ashley Williams, coming to snatch you out of the trenches of despair. So sit back, grab a snack, get something to drink, because honey, we've got a lot to discuss. What's poppin'? I told y'all I was coming right back, didn't I? Am give me some kudos, give me some points, and yes, cause I'm back. I'm is here. She is in the house. Yes, she is. She me her. I'm so crazy. How y'all doing? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. You doing well? You excited? Cause you got two episodes back to back. I told y'all I was gonna take care of y'all, didn't I? Yes, honey. Yes. So welcome to episode number seven of Broken Women Win Podcast. Thank you guys so much for carrying me along. I'm not going to say it all. You know, I say it every time. In your pockets or whatever. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. But thank you guys for being a support, for listening. Thank you to my new subscribers. Thank you so very kindly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I can't say thank you enough. So yes, honey, this right here is going to be the beginning of a series that I'm starting. And the name of this series is, is you ready for it? Breaking the cycle of toxic relationships. Yes. Are y'all sick and tired of toxicity? To- toxic. What is it? Toxicity. Toxic. Whatever. Is you sick of toxic folks in your life? Huh? Are you? Because I know I am. Oh, yes, honey. So this right here is going to be session one. Yes, and there's going to be plenty of sessions after this. I don't know how many. Don't ask because I don't know, honey. But this is going to be session one of breaking the cycle of toxic relationships. And I'm so excited about this because, listen, I've just been kind of like trying to figure out uh, which direction I should go in it. And just certain things just, you know, off the bat just kind of popped up in, you know, my spirit that everybody should just kind of pay attention to. And I know with me, you know, I want to pay attention to him. So I'm pretty sure you want to pay attention to him, too. So having two divorces under my belt, all kinds of broken relationships and whatnot or whatever, honey. Okay. Your girl is extra cautious. Baby, listen, I'm so cautious and I pay attention to everything now. Okay everything i pay attention to so yes i'm thinking about um i don't know if i'm gonna put the notes up on my website i was thinking about doing that maybe sending that out in a newsletter to you guys um but let me know if if that would be something you're interested in uh if so you would need to go to brokenwomenwin.com and just add yourself to the mailing list and uh yeah and shoot me a dm on broken women win on my instagram and or on my facebook page so we can uh, kind of get this thing popping i think i might do like a poll or something on uh on my instagram page so i can see you know uh what would be what you guys would be more interested in but yeah so we ain't got a whole lot of talking to do at the beginning of this episode because i mean i'm just recording back to back back to back yes honey so you can go listen to the beginning of the other one episode six if you're trying to figure out what i got going on if i'm cartwheeling or you know burly making it and all of this and that and how i've been trapping for the week so yeah we're gonna get into this good here thing this here good here listen as the old folk would say get your pencils baby get your ink pens get your notepads get your ipads for all my tech savvy folks or whatever you got your tablets and take note honey because uh I'm, i may not be able to get through all of them tonight i'm not gonna try to but i'm gonna take my time yes and do a slow motion style i don't know what the holy ghost gonna do I don't know, but I do have a few things that I have written down to um, go over with you guys. And listen, we just going to make it do what it do. Okay. So yes, breaking the cycle of toxic relationships. How do you break the cycle? Have you ever uh, wondered why you keep dating the same type of individuals? 
same lamp, honey, different shade okay they all start out one way but then it all ends up in the same pool which is a bunch of high funky garbage mess so with that being said i believe that the very first thing that we have to do um, in order to break the cycle of toxic relationships is first know our bloodline yes you got to know those things that your forefathers have struggled with talk to your mama talk to big mama and them Okay, talk to Nana, talk to uh, your great grandmamas, your aunties, your parents. Ask them, what is it that's in the bloodline? What did, you know, my grandparents struggle with? What did you, did you struggle with? Because it's a reason why those same things keep pulling its way back to you. It's a reason why you keep having the same fruit come off of this tree. And you know why you have that fruit coming off of that tree? It's because you have not cursed the very root of the tree. If we have an apple tree, we can take all the apples off the tree we say okay that's it i'm done with this relationship i'm done with that i'm gonna move on with my life so you take that apple off and you throw it in the trash can but what you don't realize is spiritually is much deeper than that the tree is still rooted so the, the tree the roots of the tree is represented as the strong man and so what you have to do is find out what those uh, the roots of those issues are it could be rejection it could be a spirit of whoremongering yes honey was your grandmama and them the thought pocket was your mama and your daddy and them a thought pocket okay so you have to realize what is it as in me that's pulling these people in my direction it's the same folks so you got to actually curse the very root of that tree you got to curse the very root of that spirit so that thing won't keep manifesting itself because you what you don't want it to do is to continue to grow and it continues to manifest and then it shows itself in your children which is very devastating so nobody wants that to happen so that's the very first thing that you need to do just pray and ask God to show you and also I would physically do things like ask my family members what is it that you guys struggle with what is it and some things may be at the forefront you may know like I said it could be alcohol it could be drugs it could be sex it could be um uh, it could be lying, it could be rejection, it could be abandonment and shame. All of those things, all of those spirits, they actually have a fruit. Yeah, so that's the root cause, but it all manifests itself in a different way. Everything manifests itself in a different way. So if it's a spirit of perversion, if that tree is rooted in lust and is rooted in perversion and is rooted in deception then you have all kind of stuff on your tree and un unknowingly you're drawing all of these same people in your direction and we ain't got time for that because we got kingdom work to do we got stuff at hand that we have to do and i believe that you know i still believe in the sanctity of marriage i still believe in man and woman being married i still believe that you know god can send someone into your life and you can do kingdom work together Yes, sir. We ain't got time to be dragging no dead weight, honey. Ain't nobody got time for none of that. So that's number one. Make sure you figure out what the root is. You got to find, figure out what's in your bloodline before you can even start praying for anything. Ask God to show you how to pray because you don't want to spend all of this time praying and you're praying amiss. You know, you get, you see some results, but the same thing keeps coming back. It's because you haven't cursed the very root of it. You got the first bind the strong man. The word talks about, you know, when we're praying against the enemy, when we're coming against the evil one, that you have to bind the strong man and you have to loose his bands and his cords. And his bands and cords could, I mean, they'd be wrapped all around your child. They'd like be like tentacles, honey. You got to get them off you. But I got to back up off of me. So that's number one. Number two would be, which I think is very much so important. First of all, when it comes to breaking the cycle of toxic relationships, first and foremost, we need to understand, even before we get in a relationship with anyone, we need to realize that just because they show interest in us, it doesn't mean that they should be afforded the opportunity to get to know us. Okay? It's okay to allow those that can't afford to admire I'm just saying, I'm not talking about money wise. I'm saying when people present themselves to you and they're interested in you, you have to realize what your worth is, honey. Okay? You can't dummy yourself down and sell yourself short. All right? Just because somebody is interested in you, it's okay. Allow them to smile, take the compliment, move forward. Everybody that shows interest in you, you got to try the spirit by the spirit. That's what the word says. Everyone who shows interest in you should not 
be afforded the opportunity to really get to know you because you got to realize the enemy going to send you what you like too. Hello, somebody. Okay. And I always tell y'all that I cannot teach you something that I have not walked. Okay. And I'm not going to lead you somewhere I'm not going. Okay. So what I'm telling you, I've walked through this. I'm currently walking through it and I know it to be true and I know it to work. So you got to be careful. Just take the compliment. And I know sometimes as women, it feels, um, it feels like, you know, we're somewhat pressured when a guy says, you know, I'm interested in you and all of this and that, and I think you look nice. And we kind of feel pressured when they ask for the phone number to actually give it to him. And I used to feel like that. I used to give folks my phone number. I ain't want to be bothered with at all but guess what honey in this season i told you in the previous episode honey i got a strong no in my holy ghost no thank thank you but no thank you that's all you have to say thank you but no thank you and you try the spirit by the spirit and honey to be honest with you when these guys coming up to you and they're wanting to get to know you the way they approach you pay attention to it the way they look when they're talking to you pay attention to it pay attention to how your spirit feels are are you at peace is your spirit at peace is your spirit at ease or do you feel resistance if you feel resistance then there's something that you don't need to be embarking upon move on honey i remember a time when i was dating the cuckoo bird and for all who don't know okay the cuckoo bird is cold word for my first and last um physically abusive relationship he was very much so physically abusive so i call him the cuckoo bird because he was crazy as my grandmama would say as a latch on a doodle house honey it was horrible i had to end up getting a pfa against him which was a protection from abuse he stalked me i had to sign a uh, a warrant against him uh for stalking and harassing communications he popped up out of bushes he tried to kick my door in i mean shut up my patio door honey i had to go and get me a nine had to get a gun it was a lot it was a lot he told me that he was going to kill me if he couldn't be with me nobody else was going to be with me and i was all kinds of vulgar names in the book i had never i mean i had been with guys that had mishandled me and cheated on me but i had never been with somebody who cursed me and called me all those names like ever in my life i mean they may have said a few things but i was all kind of b words and stupid hoes and dumb this and it was just a lot but I said all that to say when I first met him okay when he first rolled up on me in that car that ain't had no tag honey and he had no tag and he had no driver's license which was another hot mess so when he first rolled up on me in that little white Mercedes when I was talking to him I was uneasy but he was very persistent. He just kept pushing and kept pushing. And I'm like, dang, man, he just won't, he just won't leave me alone. So I ended up giving him my phone number anyway. And it was one of the, I'm telling you, y'all, that was the worst relationship I had ever been in in my entire life. I had no peace. I had no sleep, no rest. I mean, it was crazy. And that's a whole nother series we're going to talk about um, uh, being in and how to get out of physically abusive relationships because when you are in a physically abusive relationship you know you have to be very strategic you just can't up and go because sometimes if you just up and go you won't make it out they'll kill you and it's so sad to say but it's just the truth but we'll talk about that in another episode but yes I felt from the very beginning from day one don't do it he was so pushy um very he was persistent but he was more so pushy than anything and that should have been a flag right there alone you know, anybody that's pushing you to do something, you know, that's trying to force themselves upon you and won't allot you the time to really just kind of, you know, gather yourself and pray about, you know, what's next. That's always a flag. That's always a flag. Because when it's something that God has sent in your direction, you know, the Bible says the blessings of the Lord make it rich. It makes one rich and it adds no sorrow. OK, so if every day with you is a funeral, I got to wear black every day. Like we slow singing and flower bringing every day, baby. You ain't from the Lord. Shaitan and them done sent you, and you gonna have to go on about your business. So if I had paid attention to, you know, my spirit in the beginning, the Holy Ghost was telling me he was like, no, girl. Mm-mm. 
Mm-mm. Don't do that right there. That's the wrong one. I'm talking about y'all. It was horrible. Homeboy told me that he hadn't went to jail for drugs and come to find us. Brother, you went to prison. You was in the prison house. Jesus. Okay? And all I had to do was pay attention to my Holy Ghost. Okay? And then another thing, do something that's very practical. Google people. Oh, y'all don't Google folks? Oh, honey, I Google people. Now, since I had that cuckoo bird, I Google people. Because if I had a Googled homeboy, all of his mug shots would have popped up. And I would have ran as far as far as could go. Okay? You have to pay attention to your spirit. Pay attention to uh, when some people are reaching out to you and they're trying to get you to understand, to be careful. Pay attention to when some people are reaching out to you and they're kind of like being warning signs. Now, true enough, some people, you know, they just be some haters, you know, they just don't want you with nobody. But everybody ain't going to say the same thing, y'all. Okay, if this person has no credibility with anybody, everybody saying the same thing, then that's something that you need to just pay attention to. Because I had people reaching out to me left and right, honey. They was like, Ashley, be careful. He is a ho, 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 Merry Christmas, honey. He ain't got any line. He's crazy. All kind of stuff. He's an abuser. And I was like, well, you know, I was asking him about it. And he was like, they just don't want us together. Yeah, he was crazy. Pay attention to the signs and the symbols, honey. If you're not drawn to this, them. if your spirit is not at peace don't do it move forward so just pay attention you know if your spirit is not at ease with them move on don't try to force something okay a lot of times when we try to force things that's when we have issues and it turns out to be not for our betterment because we're trying to force something and God is like hey don't do that don't go over there stay at your house don't answer that phone call don't give them your number don't interact with them but we do it anyway because we're trying to appease our flesh okay so just know that's number two that um just because they're interested in you you know they should not be afforded the opportunity to know who you are okay pay attention to the energy that they bring all right the word says that we have to watch as well as pray all right so you can't be so spiritual to where you on a freaking cloud and you don't see nothing that's going on go ahead on if you want to the enemy gonna bust your whole head spiritually to the white meat and you're gonna be somewhere around here looking like boo boo the fool trying to figure out what didn't happen because you'd have been flim flam spiritually and bamboozled spiritually and all kind of other stuff so you got to pay attention these things are not i mean maybe this is something that you know none of you guys have really thought about but it's really easy and it's practical but sometimes you know with new relationships we get all caught up honey we get caught up big time we get caught up so the next thing you would need to do okay is listen with intentions when people talk like really listen to what they're saying because people will tell you within the first 15 to 20 minutes of them talking what they are about you can decipher through it they may not come straight out and say it but your holy ghost okay will help you to decipher through what they are saying i'm telling you pay attention to it pay attention to it listen to those conversations that you're having no matter what it's about you'll be able to find out where somebody's heart is just by letting them talk and sometimes you don't even have to ask a whole lot of questions but just let them talk and they'll tell you everything you need to know about them see that's why we have to have um, a spirit of discernment we have to ask god to sharpen our discernment so we can hear exactly what the enemy is trying to uh, disguise and what he's trying to hide from us you got to listen with intention so not only listen with your ears but listen with your spirit okay the next thing is a big one do not get caught up in emotionalism all right sometimes guys will come along and they say everything you want to hear and sometimes women will come along and they'll say everything you want to hear i'm talking to my fellas okay because i do have some guys that listen as well you know they'll come along and they say all you need to hear and then you get these butterflies and you just you know you just so like oh my god my heart and i just feel away and i'm just i feel like i'm falling in love but you know i love you with my heart how do i love you with my heart so soon and oh it's just like uh we're just made for each other but you know what the bible says about your heart the bible says that above all things our heart is deceitful and it's desperately wicked and who can know the heart 
The only one that can search the inner parts of our hearts and the inner man's heart, woman's heart, would be God. So you cannot go off of feelings. Do not go off of emotionalism, okay? Do not. Everything that you're dealing with is going to have a honeymoon period. And it's nice for people to say nice things to you. I'm not saying that, you know, everybody that says something nice to you is a horrible person. No. All I'm saying is be very mindful of what these individuals are saying to you, what you feel when they're saying to you, in your spirit, not in your emotion. Because, see, when the enemy comes to ensnare you, the enemy ensnares your emotions. He doesn't. He can't ensnare your spirit. He can't get to your spirit. Okay? The enemy ensnares your emotions. So when you get all caught up in emotionalism, you know, then it throw you throw everything off balance. Okay? So do not allow the enemy to prick you all in your emotions, okay? And you right here walking on a doggone cloud and you can't think about nothing other than that, girl, sir, you better open up your eyeballs and your ears. And it, I mean, love is a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. But you have to have some logic behind that love. Okay, you got to have some logic behind that love. And that flows into the next point. Um, are you guys spiritually compatible? Are you spiritually compatible? Because if you're not spiritually compatible, I'm not talking about, you know, because see, sometimes, you know, when we say to not be unequally yoked, we take that in a completely different direction the word says to not be unequally yoked with unbelievers that's what the word says so you have to figure out where you are spiritually are you okay with an individual being on your level spiritually or would you like to be with someone who is above you spiritually or do you just want to just grab a baby in Christ to where you just got to tell them everything and with some people that's their ministry that's fine me on the other end I ain't got time to be trying to birth no whole man out I've done that before and it crashed and burned okay so some things you're gonna have to have some principles you're gonna have to know uh spiritually I'm not saying that you got to be a bishop or a pastor no that's not what I'm saying but some things for me as for me you're gonna have to know how to cover me and my family you're gonna have to know how to how to cover yourself you know what I'm saying it's some practical things that you're gonna have to know because I just know mm -mm, I can't I ain't called to you know birth the whole man out baby ministry that's not what I'm called to I'm called to broken individuals you know and I can you know help assist you guys spiritually along the way but as far as me marrying another man that I have to nurse on the spiritual boob you know I'm over here eating steak and we over here mixing formula for you and you happy with the formula no son no ma'am no ma'am no ham no turkey I can't do it I can't do it. So you have to determine what's important to you. What's important to you in a mate? What do you desire? Does spirituality even count? You think it don't. Right now, you'd be like, I don't care. He can believe whatever he won't believe. As long as he don't bother me in my relationship with Jesus. Yeah, boo-boo, you saying that right now. But honey, let me tell you something. A house that's divided, it ain't never stood. A divided house has never stood. No, honey. So figure out if you and that individual are spiritually compatible. And even in figuring that out, the next thing is to ask the hard questions. Because see, when we meet people, we meet their representatives. <laughs> we do not meet that actual individual. It's like a job interview. You know what I'm saying? Like... They're going to tell you all these awesome things, all these good things about them. You know, they're going to look good on paper. You know, they're going to clean themselves up and all kind of other stuff. But my question is, in this season of my life, I've learned to ask, what's wrong with you? Okay, I know what's right with you. You're telling me everything that's right with you. You're telling me that you got this and you got that and you do this and you're like this. But what I want to know is what's wrong with you. Do you have a temper? What issues do you not like about yourself? Tell me what's wrong with you. Don't hide it from me. You know, and then I marry you and I don't know these things. And then you, you pop out the woodworks on me and you make me 
you know, accept, try to accept these things. No, give me the opportunity to say if I want to continue to pursue a relationship with you. So if you crazy is H-E double hockey sticks, I mean, I need you to tell me. Oh, that's too much? You don't think people tell you that they're crazy? Listen, I'm not dating right now. And I'm not dating because I'm still trying to figure out Ashley. Ashley has always been in a relationship, okay? I've always been somebody's girlfriend, somebody's fiance, somebody's wife. So, no, at this point in time in my life, my focus is on something else. And, you know, I need to get to know me. You know what I'm saying? And so when those questions come about, when I do begin to date, then I can tell you what's wrong with me because that's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear everything that's right with you. I want to hear what's wrong. What's your credit look like? Your credit jacked up? I'm just saying, we almost 40 years old, sir. She needs a house, okay? I want us to be able to get a house together. And I'm not saying that I want a man just so I can get things. No, but as a unit, there are certain things that are really, really important to me. It may not be important, you know, to anybody else, but it's really important to me. So you have to figure out what are those hard questions that you would like to ask. If somebody say ain't nothing wrong with them, honey, run. They lying. They lying. If they only want to tell you all the good stuff, and then when they tell you life stories, if it's always everybody else's fault, and they don't never take no responsibility, ding, 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 red flag. That's that victim mentality. So guess what? If it's always somebody else's fault, y'all get together, and there's some static in your relationship, guess what? It's going to be your fault too. They're not going to take ownership or responsibility for anything that has happened. You got to pay attention. And I'm telling you what I know because I learned this. I walked through this. I walked through it. So please ask the hard questions. I don't know what your hard questions may be, but the base question of the hard question is, I know what's right with you and I hear you, but what's wrong with you? I need to know what's wrong with you. And they may look at you like you're crazy when you say that, but I want to know what's wrong with you are you jealous are you selfish huh are you not a good steward with money are you a spendthrift is what my mama call it every time you get money it run through your hands like water do you have holes in your pocket you know what i'm saying are you clingy what frustrates you are you verbally abusive listen you have to see and when you say these things to people it puts them on alert and it lets them know oh well she really ain't about no games over here no because i've been here with the games there is more to me than what meets the eye okay i'm not just hips lips and fingertips and thighs and butt okay it's far 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 more to me than that far more so when you come stepping in this direction honey you're gonna have to step correct you're gonna have to step right don't allow people don't dummy yourself down you know just to say that you're talking to someone no 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 you gotta know your worth fellas you gotta know your worth if you know what you're looking for if you have a relationship with christ and you're looking for a prayer warrior why are you gonna go get you a, a thought pocket i don't understand you are an intercessor, woman of God, man of God, and you go get somebody that don't pray. What are you doing? And I can ask that question because I did that. Married somebody that didn't even, could, no, mm -mm. I am called to the people of God to minister to them and to pray and to believe God on their behalf. And then here it is, you go hook yourself up with somebody they can't even cover you in prayer. And then when you say, let's pray, they say, I don't pray out loud. Then you got to kind of teach them and coach them into doing it. And then they still end up leaving anyway. Baby, no, ain't got the time. Ain't got the time. So you got to figure it out. Ask those hard questions. Okay. The next thing, all right, to figure out what you want in your life partner and stick to it. Do not compromise because of loneliness. Don't do it. You're going to keep repeating the same cycle, the same toxic cycle. If you know you want A, B, and C, and A, B, and C lines up with the will of God, and it lines up with the word of God, why in the world would you go and hook yourself up with somebody that ain't even on the same page, they ain't even in the same book, they ain't even in the store that they, that they sell the books at? No. Mm-mm. Because I'm telling you, see, loneliness does a thing to you psychologically. 
it makes you think you know loneliness and your hormones <laughs> them two things right there honey because you be out here horny as a goat and you be like oh my gosh i'm ready to be in a relationship no you just horny no 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 you don't need a relationship no you need to go somewhere and sit down and pray and ask god to keep your hands to yourself so you won't be touching yourself i said it i have the opportunity and the the know-how to say it because this is my podcast okay so if it makes you uncomfortable i'm sorry but you have to ask god to help you keep yourself from yourself hello somebody okay so I ask God to help you with that spirit of lust that you have and it goes all the way back to like I said with knowing what's in your bloodline okay I've never had a problem with like dating people honestly I've never had a problem with being engaged or getting married however there's still some things that was causing the relationships to go in the opposite direction is because I was binding myself to broken individuals because there was still some brokenness in me. So you have to make sure you are completely and totally healed before you try to move on to a new relationship, okay? Pay attention to the signs, okay? Yes, so that was determine what's important and your life partner stick to it and do not compromise because of loneliness, okay? So the next one is to watch out for potholes along the way all right and when I say watch out for potholes along the way um, I mean like when you're engaging with those individuals um, what is it that your spirit is saying to you hmm what is it that your spirit is saying? Do you have people around you that are that are looking on um, the outer appearance? And just say, for instance, this person, you know, may look good on paper and they may have it all together. They may kind of know them. But what is God saying? Because see, sometimes people will push you into stuff. And they'll be like, oh, girl, you need to do that. Girl, he work at such and such and such. And see, I'm here in Huntsville. So they be like, girl, he's an engineer, girl. He got a coin, honey. He works that such and such and such and such but see with me I don't care nothing about that your coin is nice but I need to know what kind of mess you bringing along with you what comes with you sir you may be single may not have any kids but you could still be a package deal honey because you could have a whole legion of demons that you're trying to bring over here Mm -mm. no 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 I need to know what's below the surface honey what's behind what's in front is what I need to know and you need to know what's behind what's in front too because see people will tell you exactly what they think you want to hear but what you got to realize is with these folks honey it ain't no future in their front end at all no future in their fronting period and eventually a person can only hide who they are for so long and eventually y'all it's gonna come out and when it comes out, you're going to be looking like, what the whole world, what in all of hell is going on here? And when you try to go back and figure it out, you're like, I don't understand. How did I miss this? Yeah, you do. You was caught up in emotionalism. That's how you missed it. You, you ignored what the spirit was telling you. You ignored what your intuition was saying. You paid no attention to it. And I remember um, being in therapy with this last divorce. And um, one of my assignments in therapy was for me to write down all of the, um, the, the signs that I saw in the beginning and write down what I told myself. So that way, when I see those signs again, I'll tell myself something different. And so I was like, okay, so I'm thinking, oh, well, it'll only be like one or two things, you know, that I saw. Honey, I got before the Lord and I was like, God, I don't want to go through another divorce. I believe you've called me to marriage. I believe that just someone special that you're going to send into my life. Eventually, after I heal, I don't want to keep going through the same thing, repeating the same cycle. God, show me what the flags were. Y'all, let me tell you something. When I tell you the Lord shined a light, honey, he brought stuff. I'm talking about all the way back to the beginning. I had like two and a half pages of flags. I did. Two and a half pages of signs that I ignored. 
I did. And I'm actually in the middle of writing a book um, now. I'm thinking it's going to more than likely be an ebook. I'm going to put it on my website and it'll be up for purchase after a while before, um, hopefully before the summer is up because I'm almost done with it. But it's called, um, it's going to be a series of books, but one of them is volume one and it's pretty much painting the red flags pink. And that's a lot of times what women do. We do, we'll see these red flags and then we'll say, you know, we have this hero syndrome and we'll put these capes on and we're like, oh, I can pray them through that. You know, I can, you know, love them through that. I can believe God for this for them but honey they gotta want it for themselves okay you're out of order god never calls you to just carry everything in a marriage he never calls you to carry everything in a relationship that no 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 no. that's not a partnership no you don't want to do that okay so I want you guys to pay close attention to these signs, all right? Pay close attention to them. They're there. The flags have always been there, sir, all right? She crazy, won't get mad, and, you know, men, y'all be quick to call a woman crazy, you know, especially, you know, if a woman ends up leaving or uh, deciding that this is not, you know, the place that I need to be or my children needs to be, you know, that'd be the first thing that a guilty individual would say is that that person is crazy. And they don't really have any other substantial evidence to support what they're saying about that person other than they're crazy, okay? But listen, sir, if you're with this woman, all right, and she get mad, she go key your call, bust your wonders out, okay, set your ties on fire, you know, all kind of crazy stuff, and you haven't provoked her anything, no. When they do that, listen, come on now, come on, pay attention. You tell her, hey, I don't want to argue. I'm not going to do this. You tell him, I'm not going to argue. I'm going to go now. And then they become verbally abusive. They want to cuss you out and call you every name in the book. Come on. It's a sign. It's a sign. God has not called you to be walked all over. No, God ain't called you to that, honey. God has not called you to be a punk. Oh, no, you're strong and victorious. He ain't called you to be no wuss. No, ma'am, sis. No, no, no. Submission and being walked over, that's two different things, honey. Two different things. Submission is a beautiful thing. It really is because you're submerging yourself under the leadership of that individual who prayerfully has a relationship with Christ and they have a mission for you to submerge yourself underneath. So if you ain't got no mission, sir, how is I'm going to submit? What is I'm submitting to? Huh? What is I'm submitting to? So I want you guys to pay attention. Listen to what God is saying to you. Listen to your intuition. Listen to what your spirit is saying when you're interacting with individuals, when you're um, embarking on the idea or the possibility of a relationship. Pay attention. I keep saying pay attention because you really do have to pay attention. Watch as well as pray. Keep your eyeballs open. Don't sleep. Mm -mm. Stay woke. Okay? Stay woke. All right. So that's it for this one right here. So session two, we'll be back in maybe a couple days with session two. But that was session one. And we got that one down and out of the way. So that give you a little something to think on. Give you a little something to marinate, you know, your spirit in, marinate your mind in. And as you know, I always pray with you guys before we go. So here it is. Let's get to it. Father, in Jesus name, we thank you, God. For everything that you've done in our lives, thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding, God, because your word says um, if we desire wisdom to ask of you, God, because you give it to us freely. So, Lord, we just ask that you give us wisdom, God, on how to operate on decisions that need to be made. Give us wisdom on um, on uh, which direction to go, Lord, because we don't want to go in a direction that you have not led us to go in, God. So we cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us, Lord. We, we commit our lives until you lord we submit our wills to your wills lord i bind your will to our will which will cause our will to be your will god so lord we thank you for all that you're doing i pray for protection i had your thorns had your protection around my friends god give them peace speak to them in dreams and visions god draw them closer to you these blessings we ask in jesus name amen I love you guys oh so much and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye.
Thank you guys so much for listening and for all of your love and support. It's greatly appreciated. Please remember to rate, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like me to discuss, slide in your girl's DM on Instagram. All of my social media platforms are Broken Women Win. That is Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And you can also follow my blog on my website, which is brokenwomenwin.com. Until next time, be breezy. Thank you.